Socialist uh, Youth Union, uh, everyone who's gathered here. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak. Uh, before me, uh, the speakers have been very evocative about the situation in Gaza, what's happening, about the plight of the people, uh, the destruction that has been going on. So, um, I, uh, in a sense, I'm not ad actually adding to that because they have said enough, but I'm giving another perspective about how the media has been behaving in all of this. Sadly, um, before I go on, I just want to say that uh, the West has been trying to teach us about media ethics, media objectivity, how to do good journalism, but unfortunately it seems in this war, everything has been forgotten. But if we are trying to talk about the media, we cannot not talk about the uh, journalist casualties in the Israeli war on Gaza. Um, if it wasn't apparent already, media and journalism has become a central battlefield in this war. And in the battle over how the war is reported from Gaza, journalists have been the primary victims. Uh, my speech will generally be in English, so bear with me. Uh, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, as of December 9th, that's yesterday, at least 63 journalists and media workers were among the more than 18,000 killed since the war began. This includes 56 Palestinians, note, 56 Palestinians, four Israelis and three Lebanese. 11 journalists have been reported injured, Th three journalists are reported missing, 19 journalists have been arrested, and multiple assaults, threats, cyber attacks, censorships, and killings of many family members have been reported since the war began. There are also numerous unconfirmed reports. I think according to unconfirmed reports, the number of journalists killed is almost 90. Uh, of other journalists being killed, missing, detained, hurt, or threatened, and of damages to media officers and journalists' homes. So what does all this mean in the grander scheme of things? What this means is the high to toll of journalists in Gaza means the world is losing a window into the reality of all sides engaged in war. And significantly, it's also determining not just who gets to report this war, but how the war is reported. The words, phrases, and images that are used on air to describe the event and on the ground, they matter. Uh, a friend of mine, a uh, professor of global studies and a um, director of an independent news outlet, once said, or recently, very recently in a discussion said, words construct reality for us. In wartime, the words used by journalists are supposed to help us clarify what is happening and why. But too often, those words serve to direct us, mislead us, or shield, uh, shield the powerful from accountability. Exactly, that's what's happening around the world. This misleading is happening at every elemental level in the way Palestinian deaths are described in news stories. While Palestinians are said to have died, Israelis are killed. The latter formulation acknowledges an active act of killing by someone, but the former is passive. As if to say there is no one is to blame for Palestinian deaths, or suggest, as did Israeli military spokesman who following the attack on Jabalia uh, refugee camp said that Palestinians, this was simply an unavoidable tragedy of war. Of course, the minimization of Palestinian death toll also happens when President Biden, US President Biden, who's been uh, absolutely complicit in this war and has been given his fully backing to the uh, Israelis, questioned the accuracy of numbers seeing as the Ministry of Health in Gaza is run by Hamas. If you've noticed, how the mainstream English media, international media reports, they always, when they're uh, quoting figures, they always say Hamas run health ministry, Hamas run information department, whatever, it's Hamas run. It's not, a Hamas is a fully fledged government elected by the people of Gaza, but that's not acknowledged at any time. Uh, Biden said, I'm sure innocents have been killed and it's a price of waging a war but I have no confidence in the number that Palestinians are using. Such an allegation effectively planted a seed 
of doubt about the actual severity of Palestinian suffering, with several news outlets assessing the reporting as the way the Ministry of Health calculated casualties. This while international humanitarian agencies insisting the ministry's numbers are indeed reliable. Uh, repeatedly, uh, from Red Cross to uh, human rights associations have said uh, the numbers given by the health ministry match with what the independent numbers that they have about the deaths, the number of children that are being killed, the number of women, the disabled, the overall death toll. How media outlets frame the why, how, and what's next, basics of good journalism. Of this ongoing war also shapes public opinion. As a scholar of disinformation and propaganda once said, misleading rhetoric and incessantly one-side coverage by the US and Israeli media has allowed for the uncritical demonization of the Palestinians. This also, if you can recall, some time back there was an incident where a US 72-year-old uh, uh, man stabbed to death a Palestinian, uh, US Palestinian child. This also emanated from the way the Gaza uh, incident was reported in the US media. There's no question that the so-called uh, mainstream Western media being extends, that's the other thing. The Western media is generally being used as the propaganda is instrument in Israel's portrayal of the war in Gaza, or its war on Gaza. Throughout the conflict, Western media, including state-funded broadcasters such as the BBC and Germany's DW, uh, global media outlets such as New York Times, Washington Post, Times of London, CNN, Fox News, have been widely criticized for echoing Israel's propaganda. This means they have basically overlooked the complete um, sealing of Gaza's borders and Israel's collective punishment on Palestinian civilians by blocking the entry of water, food, medicine, and fuel, and echoing Israel's claim that it is taking care not to target civilians, but only Hamas, though 18,000, more than 18,000 people have been killed so far. Israel based its propaganda on the self-defense argument, aiming to justify internationally recognized war crimes under the law, such as collective punishment, the use of weapons like white phosphorus bombs and targeting civilians. The actions come with wide support of Western policymakers and media outlets, despite clear violations of the Geneva Convention and Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Furthermore, those daring to raise their voice against the loss of civilian lives, advocate ceasefire, or pleading for essential aid to reach Gaza are callously stamped as being anti-Semitic. Anti -Semitic. The indiscriminate use of this term extended to those participating in peaceful anti-war protests, adding insult to injury individuals who boldly spoke out or shared their anti-massacre sentiments on social media sometimes found themselves paying the price of job losses. Uh, this was, I think there were several journalists, uh, in the, even in the New York Times, the BBC, uh, Guardian, who have taken up this issue with their editors and found that they were either demoted or they were compelled to leave their jobs. So this is the tragic situation in the Western media. Unfortunately, uh, much of Sri Lankan media depends on the Western media for our news on uh, the, what's going on in Gaza. And uh, intentionally, unintentionally, knowingly, unknowingly, we tend to take the line that uh, the Mr. Media takes, and our portrayal sometimes, except for opinion pieces written by our local writers, uh, tend to toe that line about uh, Israel, uh, this propagandist line. Because uh, if you were to take an uh, AFP article on the Gaza situation and on the death toll, the line would still read Hamas run uh, health ministry said this number of people have been killed. Under the shadow of discrimination, Western media has not, uh, not only embraced one-sided narratives, but also distanced itself from journalist objectivity. Recognizing the power of rhetoric to shape public opinion, mass media adopted, opted for a bias framing 
in presenting news narratives in the last two months, almost three months. Western media outlets shape their rhetoric through the lens of one reality over the many brutalities witnessed on the ground. So to top out the reality, the chosen victims group is highlighted and emphasized while simultaneously the other victim groups is either minimalized or sentenced or silenced. So there are different areas of how, uh, hows and whys the Western media is uh, sort of towing this line of Israeli propaganda. I think it's too much to go into detail into that. But I just want to say of recent, uh, the, uh, with the uh, Western media towing the Israeli propaganda line, people have, I think media literacy has come into play. People are questioning the reports that's coming out and they are looking for news from alternative media. There are, there are alternative sites like uh, Andalou, uh, the Palestinian Chronicle, the Middle Eastern Eye, which gives a more authentic uh, perspective of what's going on in Gaza. And, and this has also to a certain extent of recent times had an impact on how the Western media is reporting because now they tend to include a little bit of that news from that area, trying to balance, but still at the end of the day, the news comes out as being imbalanced, biased, unobjective, very selective, and, and tragically, they are, they're still looking at the whole, uh, uh, the lead up to the Gaza war as something that happened on October 7th, because of October 7th, overlooking the historical facts that what drew these people to take that action on October 7th. So uh, media, uh, the best way for us to dissect and understand the media is media literacy. To be more critical in what we consume, to look for alternatives, and balance what we read with the overall reality. So thank you so much. <laughs>